another day, another travel lodge. Big thanks to Aaron's.co.uk though for sponsoring today's call around Bedford. Let's get and have a good one. If you want some new Adidas trainers, pretty green clothing, Adidas clothing, check them out. Aaron's, A-R-O-N-S dot co dot UK. You might be disappointed. How do? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, it's a Friday. Uh, I've made it to Bedford. I'm on my own for the first part of the day at least. Uh, Holly is getting the train down to Bedford because she had to keep that real job thing, you know, the, uh, the sort of weird job that people have that pays for things and they can't just swan around all day going to pubs and call that work. Anyway, uh, yeah, she's going to get the train down to Bedford later when she finishes work, so she will join me from about 7 o'clock tonight. It is half past 12 or lunchtime. Just rolled into good old B-Town. I grew up in Bedford, well, Kempston, just down the road, to, uh, to be precise. So, I don't know, Bedford, like the back of my hand. This hand, yeah. Um, looking forward to it today. Uh, obviously, second visit to Bedford. First time we've done a video, though, uh, because it was before, when it came before, it was before the YouTube channel. So I'm going to start on the outskirts like I normally do with these videos, get as much done as I can, uh, and I will be in the town centre tonight, most of which we'll have done already, but I might as well get them in the video, eh? So I'm starting on Goldington Road, a very famous road, runs out of Bedford towards Goldington. And I'm going to start here, a uh, brand new pub on the crawl, uh, I haven't been in here for 20 odd years, it's called The Anchor, looks to be run by Green King these days, but it's quite nice from the outside to be fair, big foodie pub. Family dining, fabulous beer garden, live sport. That's what they reckon. Pub number one is the Anchor. Really big pub, uh, bustling, like decent beer selection. Oh, it's Green King, isn't it? So there's a, a decent lineup of the lagers and things, decent ones. You expect to see the, uh, the IPA and the Abbott. I've gone for that Roxy Ale that I've never tried before. Obviously, we've got something else coming soon. But one of the, uh, the sort of beauty of this place is it's got to be this whopping great beer garden out here, hasn't it? Like, have a look at this. That is absolutely super space, isn't it? And you can even watch the sport on a big screen in the garden. Pretty cool, that. Little walk around the rest of it. It's obviously, yeah, it's, it's a big food-led, uh, food-led house, isn't it? But it's a, uh, it's a great-looking pub, uh, and it's even got another. Uh, it's even got another garden area to the front out here. So, plenty of space uh, to sit outside in the sun on those sunny days. Good start. Two minute walk away uh, across Goldington Green uh, will bring you up to a backstreet uh, pub, The Sportsman. So that's going to be my second stop of the day. Uh, nice because I didn't even know about it, so I've never been in this one in my life before. So I'm quite looking forward to it. I always like finding new places. Thanks Google Maps. But yeah, it's up on it's a Wells & Co pub. Look. Up a little housing bit just off Goldington Green, hidden away. Stop two then, sportsman. Yeah, it looks exactly like uh, I would expect it. It's very clean, very tidy. Uh, ladies, very nice. Got a few beers and stuff in here. I do a pub blog. I'll explain in a minute. People always look at me like I'm so weird when I'm when I'm sort of wandering around. But it's a uh, it's a nice looking little pub. This I'm quite impressed. Split into two sides. Another bar to the other side. But I'm amazed. It was a pub in Bedford. I didn't know it existed. I thought I knew everything. I don't know everything. Before we run off, might as well show you the other room as well. It's very nice in this side. And, uh, and a pool table. And dartboard, I'm assuming. As you might, I can see the off Yep. Yeah. Pool table and dartboard in the back room as well. Yeah, never, ever, ever did I know that this one existed. Now I do, I'll definitely be back. About a 10 minute walk back along Goldington Road uh, towards town uh, and hang a left down the, I think it's called Newnham Avenue. Hang a left down there, uh, only about another 200 yards or so to walk, and you'll find the White Horse. Beautiful pub this, again, I haven't been in here for 20 odd years, didn't do it on the first tour of Bedford on the Crawl. Another Wells & Co, but it always was an absolute stunner, this inside, so I'm hoping it still is. And it's stop number three, White Horse. It's still just as beautiful in here as it always was before uh, as well. So, a few ales on, we've got Anchorman Tribute uh, from St. Austin. Obviously I was uh, down in Cornwall last week, London Pride, uh, and there's old Rosie on the taps. Obviously, we are in Charles Wells country, Brewpoint as it's called now. Uh, so there's one of the, uh, the Brewpoint ones on there. And the, I've gone for Anchorman, which is this, which is from Brewpoint. So brewed in Bedford as well. But it is, uh, yeah, it's always been a beautiful pub, this. Always was. And it's still, it's just as beautiful. The food that uh, I can smell as you come in from there as well. The people eating in the, the dining part around here. The food smells absolutely brilliant. 
kind of wish I was eating. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really impressed by this. Yeah, just looks, just looks nice, doesn't it? But yeah, they were the, uh, the bar options. So, and we will head on out. So, dog friendly, which is nice, but very busy on food. Uh, and it does smell absolutely brilliant. Still a top pub. So far, so good for my old stomping grounds. Can't complain. There really are some beautiful pubs on the outskirts of Bedford. The majority of them are going to be Wells and Co. Obviously, I mentioned Charles Wells earlier, the brewery from Bedford. Uh, checkered history, Charles Wells with the people of Bedford, especially the football team. Uh, they took the ground away from them about 1980 something, uh, I believe. And the, the Bedford Town Football Club actually went out of business uh, to reform in 1990. Uh, and continue on as they are today. But yeah, uh, Charles Wells has always been a sort of a Bedford institution. Now they call themselves Wells & Co. So the park that I'm about to do, look how beautiful that is. The park is a Wells & Co. pub. Up here at the, the sort of the top end, you've got Bedford Park further down to the, uh, to the left. You can head down that way. But yeah, the park pub is gonna be my fourth stop of the day. This place has changed a lot. Since I was here, it looks so much better in here. Decent lineup on here. The Kings of Lager, Estrella and Marie. As I said, Wells and Co. pubs. You're going to find Wells and Co. products. The Genesis, Fog on the Supernova, both Wells, Wells bits. But it is gorgeous looking pub. Look the beams and stuff on the ceiling. Nice looking fireplace, and the restaurant space around here is absolutely gorgeous. This did not look like this, trust me, years ago when I used to come in here. It looks a million times better. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful looking place. And then you've got a little conservatory bit out on the side, out here. I absolutely love that table. I think that is wicked. But big, decent sized garden to the back of the place as well. This is definitely one of my favorite pubs in Bedford. Always was, and it's vastly improved from then as well. So this is definitely somewhere I would come to drink. I think that's such a good pub uh, now. They've, done, they've worked wonders with, with what that looks like indoors. They've even moved the bar from what I remember. It used to be a bar around the back side, but yeah, brilliant looking place now. So I'm in the sort of the Putno area of Bedford. Uh, and my next stop is gonna be the Bluebell. Low maintenance garden, but plenty of space in it. Sun trap, nice extension. Up here in the, uh, the Putno area, it's got a library and things just on this estate behind where I'm stood. Let's go and see what the Bluebell's got to offer. Big, mega busy pub this. Yeah, there's loads of people dining behind me. It's really busy. Go Owls, just London Pride and Green King IPA. Old Moot, Shombo, Moretti, Foster's, Amstel Cruise, Campo and Guinness on the bar. But yeah, it's a, got a decent size on it, look. Quite a beautiful looking boozer, to be honest. I don't remember it ever looking as nice as this other. It's obviously had a few refurbs probably since I was there. Good thing. There are very few times doing this that I come across something that actually makes me go, wow, look at that. Or where did that come from? So I talked a little bit about Charles Wells. And I said, Charles Wells Brewery, uh, been in Bedford since 1876. In about 2017, I think it was, Charles Wells sold the old brewery and the, the brewing and the wine business to Marston's. Charles Wells no longer. The company became Wells & Co and decided to once again start brewing. So obviously they couldn't use Charles Wells or the brewer or anything like that. So they changed the, uh, the brewing side of it to Brewpoint and decided, to build this. So Brewpoint has been in existence since 2020 and is now, yeah, Wells & Co's Brewing, basically. So that is where the name change and the confusion comes from. This is on a, a McDonald's, uh, an Audi uh, and stuff like that, right on the, the very outskirts of Bedford. But I'm pretty sure this used to be an old school playing field many moons ago. It certainly didn't have something as beautiful, modern looking as that on it. So let's go and, uh, and have a tour. Let's go and see what Brewpoint actually looks like inside. One of the things I love about places like this is that they offer flights. Uh, for those who don't know what a flight is, it's uh, three thirds or however many thirds you like on a, a, like a tasting board, a beer tasting board. I mean, what's not to love about a beer tasting board? So I have, uh, I, I've, I've done, to, you know, to rack three more up and be untapped. I've decided to, uh, to go with the flight board and I have three wonderful beers to try. Uh, I'm also just about to be joined by Mike. If you've watched the Wellingborough video, you would have uh, seen that Mike came out of me. Uh, and here he is, thundering in now. So let's, uh, let's crack on with these. Look at these, so number one, uh, I said they're all their own products. So number one is the Hop and Heart. Two is the Triple Hop. And three is the one I'm most looking forward to, the West Coast IPA that is called Alpha. 
So let's, uh, let's try number one. If I can work out how to get them out of the, uh, the tasting board. So this is their hop and... Oh, that's very good. Mm. That's very much up my street. Hop and heart. Good work. Number two of their own products is the triple hop. So that is uh, that one, a bit darker in colour. Normal IPA, that. Yeah, pretty good. And the third one, that's the one that I'm most looking forward to, the West Coast IPA, and it's called Alpha. Look at the colour of that. That's right up my street. Oh, yeah. That's the best. That's absolutely superb stuff. Have a look at this one. It is absolutely beautiful looking. A gorgeous place. We'll uh, I'll have a, a bit more of a wander around in a minute, but yeah, it's absolutely stunning. All the brewing obviously takes place in the uh, in the far sides up there. It's just a bit of a shame that it is so far, I suppose, out of the town centre of Bedford because otherwise you would probably spend all night in here and then just head into town for a few after. It's probably a bit of a walk to the town centre from here, but I think this place is great. Look at the beers in here. They have got obviously all of their own stuff on in here. Loads of wicked stuff. I've tried most of these now. And I've got to say, I'm pretty impressed by all of the ones of theirs that I have actually had before. So, as I said, today, this West Coast IPA Alpha that I've got is absolutely brilliant. But loads of stuff. I've also got loads of cans and takeout stuff over in the fridges. Superb. And obviously the brewery. The magic happens. It's just through there. Shuffleboard table. It's a cool place though, isn't it? It is a really cool looking place. Now that the serious mission begins, we've got to try and get through as many as we can in as short a space as possible. Uh, and they're all a bit spread out as well. We've got a lot of walking to do, a lot of places to visit, but we've made it to the Burnaby Arms for 4 p.m., which is their opening time, and the front door has just been opened. So the Burnaby Arms is gonna be my seventh stop of the day. And I'm quite looking forward to this. Again, this is one I don't think I've ever been in before in my life. So I'm very much looking forward to it. And then the old Charles Wells branding. I'm gonna get so confused between Brewpoint, Wells and Co and Charles Wells today. So for that, I apologize. Burnaby Arms. I definitely haven't been in here before. And you know what? I'm, I'm a little bit annoyed at myself for not having been in here before. So that's about Sal, one of the landlords there. He's a, he's a thoroughly nice chap. And this is a really good, this is, this is what you would call, I certainly would, I would refer to this as a hidden gem, a hidden backstreet gem on one, of, uh, on one of Bedford's back streets. And these are, the bread and butter of the pub industry. These are the ones that you really should be coming to see because they're not the town centre boozers that everyone knows about. They're the ones that have got all the character, all the spirit, all the heart. These are the ones that are hidden away in the back streets like this. And you should really be coming to see these because this is a, this is a belter. And yeah, I am, I'm annoyed at myself for never having been in here before, to be honest. I mean, it's absolutely superb. Wonderful little place. It's got a nice little rear garden as well, look. But I'm glad we got here at opening because that's allowed me to have a proper little walk around and show you without people in the way or, or anything like that or any music playing so I can show you what it is. But do certainly come and find the Burnaby Arms. I do not think you will be disappointed in this in the slot. What a great little pub. I, I, I absolutely love the Burnaby Arms. I thought it was absolutely wicked. But continuing the theme of backstreet pubs. Uh, so I'm on Wellington Street. The Wellington is literally just around the corner as well. But there's the balloon. My best friend from school used to work in here many, many years ago. So I used to frequent this quite a lot. But that's 20 something years ago now. So I'm interested to see what it looks like these days. Got to love a backstreet boozer. Balloon's next. It hasn't changed a bit. So. Red stripe though. Look at this look. Red stripe on the thing now. Got to love that. Got to love having a red stripe on. But it hasn't changed a bit. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Place has not changed in 20 years. Even the uh, even the marijuana smell is, that emanates as you walk out the door is still the same. So some things don't evolve. Some things just stay the same. And like I said, if it ain't broke, you know, don't fix it. And the, that is a pub, little back street pub, locals place that has never changed, never needed to, and it survived. So they must be doing something right, eh? One of the most shouted out ones, though, one of the, the most recommended Bedford pub is the Wellington Arms. Uh, and it is literally, yeah, just, just around the, the corner there, turn right just there, but the balloon is less than a minute away. The Wellington Arms. Uh, I haven't been in here again for a long, long time, so I don't know what it's like, but a lot of people have told me I will really enjoy this now. So let's see. 
let's be having your Wellington Arms. Firstly, this place is belting. It's got, it's got such a good beer line up in here. And I said, I was, I was told, wasn't I, that I would absolutely love this place now. And people were right, and it is. It's just as beautiful. The beer line up's fantastic. But it is every bit as beautiful a pub as I, uh, as I remember it being now from, from many, many years ago. And uh, it, is, it is like, literally, it's like night and day coming from the balloon into here. Is, yeah, um, it's one extreme of pub to the other, but this place is absolutely banging. Um, and I absolutely love it. But look, in here, gone for the, uh, the Salem Porter, which is absolutely superb. I'm loving that. And the vocation, hop, skip, and juice, which is a bit citrusy, isn't it? A bit citrusy, yeah. I'm, a, I'm an advocate for vocation, but I'm not sure on that one. Gonna, gonna untap score that anyway, as we'll see. The way we're gonna have to do stuff to try and get the pubs in that I've never done before is walk down to, right, the high street of Be is around this corner, around that way, but we can't go that way. So we've come down in, so our next stop has to be the flower pot, which is here. This is one of my favorite pubs in Bedford, always has been. Proper live music boozer, this. Proper beautiful little pub as well. Look at that. Absolutely sterling little place. It's absolutely lovely gaff. So we need to do that, but then we're gonna to have to go down this way to work round in kind of a horseshoe. And event we're sort of gonna come out at the end of that road up there, walking back towards the high street. But on with the important business of doing the pubs, the flower pot. So next up, and I think it's stop. I, I've lost count already. I think it's, it's nine or ten. No, there's always there's always one of there things it's really funny to shout out of a window of a car when you're filming like hilarious you know takes all sorts ah, there's a familiar siren i hear in bedford all the time flower pots up next uh we'll work around it it will make sense i promise such a cool little pub so here's your uh, here's your beer selection so they got two ales on that london pride and doom bar and stuff but it's such a it's such a cool little pub the, uh, the sunday roast in here are pretty legendary but the old uh the aesthetics of the place the little, the low ceilings, the beams, everything about it. It's always been a beautiful pub and they have loads of live music and stuff on. And we wander around to where the beer garden is. It just gets more beautiful as you go through it. It's one of those that, yeah, I've always been, I've always been a big fan of this place. Dog friendly, decent beer garden stuff out of there. But Bedford Institution, this place, it ain't going anywhere. You look, you find. Did not know there was a uh, sports bar here called Legends. Mike's not happy because he wanted to go to a, a good pub and now we're, we're now doing a sports bar, which looks like probably a first floor thing. But yeah, never judge. Never judge a pub by its exterior. So we're doing it. Did you know me? I don't leave a good pub behind or any pub behind. Legends up next. So it's, it's, a, 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 it's a pool hall, as you see. Say so it's screen, so it's, it's a proper sports bar. You know what? I love sports bars. So I'm gonna go and uh, teach Mike how to play pool very quickly. Decent enough beer line up. And look, I have not seen that there, Jack Daniels Bonded. If you've never had that before, you should definitely have that. That's one of Jack Daniels' peak products. Go to game of pool, and I won. So I'm smiling, I'm happy. I did just one, but I won. Right, Salve, that runs the Burnaby Arms, uh, they've got another pub. And now this one, the Forester's Arms. Beautiful little pub, this from what I remember from years ago. Again, another obviously, obviously Charles Wells pub, but, Please be back. So yeah, he's a he's a lovely guy, Salve, that runs that uh, Burnaby Arms. So I'm quite looking forward to doing his other pub. So Forrest's Arms, I think it's top 13. Who knows? So I told you, yeah, so run by run by the same people, Salve, as runs the uh, the Burnaby Arms. And this is equally as good as it's getting here. I had a, I had a London Pride in it because I hadn't untapped it. But look how beautiful this place is in general. Let's have a, a quick one the rounds and a look. Because I'm, uh, I'm really impressed, again, by the aesthetics of in here. I think it is a, a wicked looking little pub. I love little, little hidden alcoves and stuff. So the darts obviously happen in here. Great beer garden and stuff as well. Super place. Can't fault with it. I would definitely come back here again. Again, say a lot though, but I'm having a great day. Even in my old hometown, going and exploring some of the pubs that I've not been in, in this long, it's nice to just walk around, but this is the first then of two ships. This one's technically called the Ship Inn. This is a Wells & Co, Charlie Wells pub. It's pretty nice looking to be fair, isn't it? But this one is up here, not far from the train station, this one. Whereas the other ship that I have done before, but not for a video, we will get there in not many pubs time either. Uh, it's just called the Ship and that's a Green King. So that's the difference between them. But look at it, look at the tiling. The tiling and the, and, and the, and the beams on the outside of that. 
are absolutely gorgeous. I think I, I genuinely, I've always liked this pub. So let's, uh, let's get it done. 14, 15, I don't know, you can count better, mate. This one still retains a lot of its old sort of original features. They are with the old, uh, the, the curves and, and things like that on the ceiling. I mean, the beers, yeah, not, listen, considering it's a, a Charles Wells pub, the beer choice isn't the greatest, but it, aesthetically, I, uh, I quite like the place, and I think it's a, it's a decent looking. But yeah, the beer choice surprised me a bit for a Charlie Wells one. Keep on wandering down, get to the Barley Mo. Um, this used to be a pub as well, a little green fronted thing, so it's now a cafe apparently. I think this was called the Wheat Sheaf. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, the old Curiosity Cafe, but I think that might have been called the Wheat Sheaf. That was a really good pub from what I remember. Barley Mo, um, yeah, can't really remember much about it, so we'll go in and make a decision from there. There was also one around the back of a Squires, old Green King pub, so if anybody knows what that used to be called, because that's got scaffolding around it now. Anyone knows what that was called? Let me know. UK's oldest gay bar, the Barley Mo. See, I didn't know that, and I lived here, and I've been in here, I've frequented this many, many. Pool table in the back room. Uh, Josh, one of the managers here, categorically tells me it is uh, the, the UK's oldest he's, he's even checking it, he's gonna prove it to me, but I, I believe him, I believe him. It's a wicked little bar. Open till 4 a.m. as well, and if you come in here at 3.45 and ask for Charlie, you will 100% guaranteed to be let in and given a free Jager bomb. That may or may not be true. Probably may not be true, but try it anyway. One of the ones I've been most excited about coming back to in Bedford has got to be Beer Fly. So here on this majorly busy junction, uh, it's beyond Bedford School, where one of us might have gone to school. Yeah, it was me. Um, so yeah, Beer Fly just there, proper little craft beer bar. Perhaps been taken over since the last time I was here, so looking forward to seeing what they've done with it. Apparently they haven't ruined it or changed it much at all, and it was absolutely brilliant last time I was there. So that's up next, Beer Fly. The good news is, it's just as good in here as it always was before I got taken over. The can selection and bottle selection here alone. Some of those like Trappist Rochefort, but some of these ciders, what you could want. But, as always, I'm gonna harp on about how good some of these local breweries are. If you've never, if you've never done some of these craft breweries, look, the Vault City Bucky is fantastic. This I've never tried, the mango, passion fruit, vanilla ice cream, yeah. I need to, uh, sorry, I need to, uh, I need to sample that very soon, but the can selection here is absolutely killer. It really is, and it is an absolutely wicked little bar anyway. So there are six, uh, no, eight, Eight taps, all advertised up there. Wonderful little bar, and I'm just I'm just pleased that the even though it's been taken over since the last time I was there, that it's not been changed or altered in any way. It's maintained its craft beery roots, and its craft beery roots. Pretty damn cool. Man. I've gone for this, so I've gone for this. The uh, the yonder. Go over there. Let's see, and look at that beery goodness. You know I love a yonder. And that's exceptional. So Mike uh, and Harry have gone, but I have been joined by... Uh, Me. You? What's your name? I know my name. Oh, her name's Holly. Uh, that's my wife. She got the train down. All the way from Nottingham, on her own, like a big girl, didn't you? Yep. She's well happy about it as well. But, uh, yeah, they've gone, so stuck with Holly now for the rest of the day. This, where we're at now, High Street, so it's now called High Street Social Tap. This, when I lived here, was a Weatherspoons called the Banker's Draft. It's not been a Weatherspoons for a long time. Apparently it was a microbrewery in between um, this and now, but it only recently reopened. So High Street Social Tap is our next stop, and it's a new one on me. Still looks a bit Weatherspoonsy. Well, let's go and find out. It's very nice in here, to be fair. So yeah, obviously it's, it's still laid out like Weatherspoons. So big spacious gaff obviously now screens and things like the weather spoons never had but the beer lights better than it was when it was weather spoons i've got to give it that and they've even got look the old uh, the old brew dog wingman on there it's a bit of craft but it's nice in here now smell was very new as well i've been up in three weeks it smells new straight across the road is it's a revisit so my third revisit today beer fly uh the flower pop and now the bear 
Rock pub. One of Bedford's uh, longest standing rock pubs. Beautiful little gaff this. Uh, we love a rock pub as you know. So let's go and, uh, let's go and sample the bear. I think it's 16 so far. I mean, it's, it's not busy in here tonight, admittedly, but they, they have brought back the play at the, at the end here. So, Foster's, Guinness, Carling, John Smith, I don't know. I'll with Hen on a handful. Stella, Magnus with the dark fruit and stuff, but it is a, it's a long, narrow rock bar with that seedy undertone and vibe to it that I like. I do like this one, I really do. So I think we've got, uh, we can do one more, I think, because We've done a lot of this end of the high street already, so we're walking down the high street. Cross keys we've done before. This Tesco's Express, this was Yates's. I spent Millennium Night in there when that was Yates's. Uh, and then they made Yates's just there, what is now Slug and Lettuce, after it was a Litton Tree. Don't even ask, don't even get me started. But yeah, that Slug and Lettuce just there that we're coming to was, um, so it was Litton Tree, then it was Yates's, because they moved Yates's from there to a, you don't start me. Vogue is now a nightclub, but that was Harvey's bar. Uh, once featured on an episode of 24 Hours in Police Custody. That's a lot of bed for this. Um, no, not there. The, here we are. These bits here were once Amigos and Chaplin's. This, oh, this is a bar now. Here we are. This was the Hobgoblin just here. So, yeah, this just here was Hobgoblin. And it's now apparently called Standard. So actually, saying we've never done this before, the standard, uh, and it was Hobgoblin for many, many years. Let's go and do the standard. I'm really pleasantly surprised. That's Hobgoblin for years. This was always a decent sort of rocky undertone type. Obviously a little bit of live music and stuff now. Guinness, San Miguel, Ferretti. Still got the old Hobgoblin IPA and stuff, but that one's it's, um, it's a decent booze on this, you know. I, uh, I quite like the place. Apparently, he does something he doesn't open until 7 in the evening. But apparently, it's been there since 2015 as the standard. Who knew? I didn't. I, we actually quite liked it, but dead opposite is a Bedford institution again. I feel we should put in the video. They are queuing to get in, but yes, yeah, the rose. Um, again, this has been the hog's head. It was the rose, it was the hog's head, it was the rose again. It used to be owned by Whitbread. Not even inside. It's, it's a late opening bar with a massive great beer guard on this. But I don't feel we could really do a Bedford video justice without nipping into the Rose at least to show you what it's like. So uh, the Rose will probably be our last stop before I take you to the world's greatest takeaway. Trust me on this one. But the Rose, yeah. In some weird alternate universe where they, I think they're about to try and charge three pounds to get in to a Stone Gate pub. It's, it's bizarre. Maybe. But. I don't know, I will clarify, but yeah. It's three quid to get in, but she didn't she let us in. Um, what in the blue stone gate is that three pounds to get into a pub? It's a pub. Not even that, is it? Right. But yeah, it's the Rose. Um, it's a beautiful old pub in Bedford, like, for many, many years. Charging to get in. I am, I'm, also, I'm, I'm gutted by how chappy the Rose is these days. That, honestly, that was one of the best, oldest, Best pubs in Bedford I was for years. Absolutely loved it. Now, it's a it's a chav hole of crap. But I did tell you I would take it to the best ever takeaway, and it's here. Called Andreas. Down the end of the high street, back up to where we come a little while ago. But trust me, Andreas Pizzeria do the greatest potato wedges known to man. So we're gonna get some, and I'll show you. I love it. Now. So the best potato wedges you will ever find in a takeaway. Pizza looks good. What you got? Nuggets. Happy? She's almost never happy, so she thinks they're good. But yeah, these, these potato wedges, are the greatest <laughs> potato wedges you will ever find. That was Bedford. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, hit subscribe if you don't already. See you soon.